Hello everybody. Lecture 7 will cover the basic principles of the next generation sequencing or NGS. We will learn about applications of NGS methods in the research settings, how to formulate the strategies to understand the advantages and disadvantages among various NGS platforms and in comparison with microarray technologies and how to apply the principles of NGS data analysis. We will start with some general information on genes and genomes. We'll get familiar with the most popular NGS platforms and some definitions used in this field. We'll touch on general principles and steps in NGS data analysis and we'll take a look at the tools and utilities that are used in NGS data analysis and interpretation. The top hierarchical classification of any genome is its chromosomes, which were described long before we had an idea about genes as hereditary units or their functions. The term chromosome is again a combination of Greek words chroma or color and soma translated as body. The word chromosome was coined by the German biologist Theodor Bavery a little bit later after also German biologist Walter Fleming in 1880s described the mitosis and named the substance divided between two daughter cells as chromatin. Bavery is also a co-author of the bavery saturn chromosome or inheritance theory published in 1902, which defines chromosomes as the carriers of genetic material explaining the laws of Mendelian inheritance. This theory also identified the genes and loci as being the particles described in Mendel's law. Chromatin and chromosomes are strongly stained by a number of dyes, the hematoxylin being a dye that stains both components. The table on this slide shows the sizes and number of protein-coding genes mapped to each of the chromosomes. Among the 22 numbered human chromosomes plus sex chromosomes X and Y, the distribution of genes is not proportional to chromosome sizes. For example, chromosome 19 has the highest, while chromosome Y has the lowest density of genes. Not only the genes are unequally distributed on chromosomes, but the sizes of genes also differ substantially, the largest being several million bases in length. The current table is somewhat outdated and you may want to check the correct numbers of exons in other sources. As you already know, the longest gene is titine with 383 exons in its translated regions. Titine is not a typical gene by the number of exons the second gene, nebulin, being twice shorter with 183 exons, which is probably closer in number of exons to some other large genes. In addition to genes having different number of exons at different lengths, they also vary in sizes of introns, the largest intron being in the potassium channel modulatory gene KCNIP4, with an approximately same length in base pair as the gene itself. After the publication of the human genome in 2003, one of the very first people to be sequenced was Greg Venter, the founder of Celera Genomics, the company that contributed tremendously in speeding up the human genome project using the shotgun sequencing technique. Venter's genome was sequenced in 2007 using the same shotgun methods and the cost for the project was estimated at about $70 million. James Watson genome was sequenced within two months using the Roche 454 GSLFX platform at Baylor College of Medicine at a cost of approximately $1 million. And later on the same year, several individuals representing the population of West Africa and Southeast Asia were sequenced using the Illumina technology. Today we already have over 1,000 human genomes completely sequenced and it is projected that we will shortly achieve an output of about 10,000 genomes per year. So, with so many genomes, how do we compare them? As we learn from the sequence alignment principles, we can align any two sequences using different algorithms. In case of the reference genome, prior to 2013, we had several assemblies that were based on different people sequenced using different technologies, including Craig Venter's genome and James Watson genome. Currently, we still have different assemblies for different species sequenced at different labs, 
but human genome reference is monitored and updated by the Genome Research Consortium. Hence, the acronym of the assembly is GRC with a number indicating the major release. So the GRC release is based on the assembly of many haplotypes with indication of differences between them on the map. The latest GRC genome version is Build 38 Release 3 as of April 2015. The GRC human genome map could be browsed and by clicking on any of the regions of interest, the NCBI genome browser will open with all relevant links and information about the loci. This is one of the regions from the map and you are already familiar with the NCBI genome browser and how to configure it. As you can see, there are some areas with information on the curation of regions. And if you click on one of them or just hover the mouse over the region, the information on disagreements between sequences will be displayed. Jay Flatley, the CEO of Illumina, which is one of the most popular sequencing platforms at this time, in this interview to Times Magazine back in 2009, predicted that by 2019, the sequencing of newborns will become a routine, similar to some existing genetic panel tests for Mendelian genetic disorders such as phenylketonuria or Down syndrome. Considering the rate of technological advances, this statement may not be so far off from the reality, and at least the technology is already available, if so decided by the public health system. Prenatal diagnostic and newborn screening for a panel of rare and untreatable diseases would be a nice nationwide application of NGS. However, at this time, only a certain number of genes causing such diseases are known, and clinical tests are introduced for just these diseases. A large number of Mendelian diseases are already introduced in clinical practice diagnostics, and more information we will gather from NGS methods, the larger will be the spectrum of diseases that we will be able to diagnose prior to birth. Family planning is another practical application that is finding its way into our social lives. For example, the Ashkenazi Jews are using genetic tests to arrange marriages among their ethnical group members in order to avoid phenotypic manifestations of some genetic diseases. As you know, this ethnic group is prone to a number of diseases, and by comparing the genomic profiles, they can diminish the chances of getting the homozygous mutations in the newborns. I'm not going to comment on the ethical aspects of these types of family planning, but from the healthcare point of view, such approach makes sense. Also, in vitro fertilization methods are using the screening of fertilized all sites for a number of diseases as the healthcare professionals have the possibility to implant only the ones that do not have mutations. People are using more and more the over-the-counter genetic tests and some of them are prescribed to patients to predict patients' responses to pharmaceutical treatments. We know well that cytochrome P450 group of genes is responsible for the metabolic conversion of drugs into active forms or deactivation of drugs. By knowing the profiles of such metabolizing genes, we could adjust the treatments and combinations of drugs for each patient. The 23andMe is under the radar of the FDA, and so far only one test is approved for population screening. However, the company provides the full SNP array known at this time, and any individual may download their own data and analyze it either for a small fee at service providing websites or using some standalone applications available also for mobile devices. Among the nationwide projects initiated in the last years, the newborn WGS project with lifetime monitoring is worth mentioning because these selected individuals will be able to provide a wealth of information on the environmental influence on our gene expression profiles. Also, the personalized genome project initiated by George Church in 2005 is aiming on sequencing over 100,000 people worldwide and includes at this time several international networks such as Canada, Europe and UK and Australia. The CleanSeq project is a large-scale medical sequencing clinical research pilot study sponsored by the NSGRI aimed towards sequencing 1,500 patients with over 900 of them already enrolled. This study collects all available medical information on enrolled subjects and compares the phenotypes against individual genotypes, 
after each subject is tested for medical abnormalities at the NIH. Now getting back to NGS, we could compare the existing methods by their output type and amount of information that could be obtained. The general comparison of Sanger method with microarray and next generation sequencing shows a huge difference in the volume of information that can be generated by either technology, number of samples that could be sequenced simultaneously in one experiment, ability to automate the process, and the accuracy of results. NGS yields the highest throughput and results in digital base identification with the highest accuracy. However, the length of reads obtained by NGS technologies used to be shorter than the reads obtained by Sanger's methods. Currently, NGS platforms are capable of matching the length of Sanger sequences of 1,000 and more base pair, and in many cases are surpassing this number several folds or even tens of times. One of the important definitions that we need to be familiar with is the coverage, which in general terms means the number of times each sequenced region will be represented in the sample. The statistical definition of coverage is the number of times the investigated interval contains the true value of interest. In sequencing, such value of interest is the reference genome, and coverage is calculated as the total number of aligned reads multiplied by the average length of the reads and divided by the length of the reference genome. Multiplicity of short reads produces redundant information, also called oversequencing, which allow to minimize the random error and to obtain high-quality sequence information. To increase the coverage and the quality of information, the ultimate task of the sequencing platforms is to obtain larger number of longer reads. Some of the advantages of NGS over microarray are not so evident at this time, as manufacturers of microarrays are trying to keep up with the NGS capabilities. For example, Illumina microarray platforms have developed specific chips for non-coding RNA, microRNA, and other molecules which were excluded from analysis just several years ago. Nevertheless, the information obtained with NGS is much more abundant comparing with microarrays and includes the sequences of all small RNA such as non-coding, small nucleolar RNA, non-polyadenylated messenger RNA that are not annotated at this time and can detect a number of epigenetic changes. Despite many advantages of NGS, the Sanger sequencing and microarrays still have practical applications in molecular genomics and it is not likely that NGS will completely replace them in the nearest future. The major reasons for viability of the older methods are that many laboratories have the equipment and trained personnel, and for smaller targeted tasks, such methods are very suitable and feasible. As NGS will be transformed from discovery into clinical platforms, the advantages of NGS will favor its use over the older methods. The main purpose of the deep sequencing is to generate knowledge that would help us understand the relationships between the genotype and phenotype. Such knowledge would be used to develop new treatment strategies or to adjust the existing ones. The existing NGS platforms may be subdivided into discovery and diagnostic types. While the division is conventional, the platforms differ significantly in their purposes, experimental tasks, and obtained information. The discovery platform is predominantly hypothesis generating and the sequencing process is agnostic. It allows to sequence a large number of samples per run with high coverage of genome and to generate huge amount of data. The discovery platform is used in research by academic institutions and pharmaceutical companies. Representative technologies include sequences developed by Helicos, Illumina, Roche, Life Technologies, the upfront cost of these sequences are usually high and the consumables are expensive. On the other side, the diagnostic platforms are targeted to test the hypothesis by focusing on particular genes. Performed on individual samples and the runs are much shorter in time. If used for the development of personalized medicine or companion diagnostic genomic tests, such platforms have better chances to be approved by the FDA in the US and respective regulatory agencies in Europe and all over the world.
the representative devices for diagnostic platforms approved in the US have been marketed by Iron Torrent, Illumina, and I believe most recently Pacific Biosciences has also received the clearance for their specific tests from the FDA. Sequencing by itself has similar principles, which are based on the detection of nucleotides as they are being incorporated in the elongating chain, the difference being in the chemistry of synthesis and physics of detection of events. The overall workflow of NGS includes sample preparation via DNA or RNA, sequencing and recording of the order and data analysis. Sample preparation for the next gen sequencing is usually a tedious process which depends on the skills of technicians and lasts sometimes days. Major manufacturers of NGS devices are offering automated solutions which should simplify the process. Depending on the aim of the sequencing, DNA or RNA is fragmented and the first strand cDNA is synthesized, sample preparation may include certain steps of modifications such as depletion of ribosomal RNA, enrichment for polyadenylated messenger RNA in cases of RNA-seq, or enrichment for exons or specific transcription factors in cases of exome DNA-seq or chip-seq respectively. After preparation, the samples are immobilized on the solid platforms and some platforms require amplifications of their samples. In either case, labeled nucleotides are added in specific orders to the immobilized samples and the incorporation of the nucleotides is recorded by the optical systems or changes in electrical circuit. Because the coordinates of the fragmented cDNA on the flow cell is known and because the order of added nucleotides is predefined, the system records each incorporation of each nucleotide during every cycle of synthesis. The cycles are repeated multiple times and the excess of nucleotides are washed away after incorporation and each cycle. The process takes place simultaneously on many attached templates molecules and the cycles are repeated as many times as the chemistry allows. The raw reads after recording, albeit filtered, and data analysis and interpretation of results are the most challenging steps at this time, requiring solid knowledge of bioinformatics and principles of molecular biology. The first step in data analysis consists of processing the image recording during the sequencing. This step depends on the instrument and technology used Usually the nucleotides are detected as signals upon addition of building blocks during each cycle of synthesis. The images are usually very large in size and require abundant physical space on the hard drive of the machine. Because each NGS platform uses proprietary data recording strategy, the raw data is usually converted into some standard format of files still very large in size. The secondary data analysis is application specific and may be done using different open source software. In the majority of cases, the secondary data analysis is performed using the proprietary applications developed for particular technologies. The reason is again the lack of standards in data output, which requires conversion of raw data into manageable size and format of files. Oftentimes, the secondary data analysis serves also for quality control of the equipment and general statistics about the runs, such as total number and average length of reads and error rates. Data interpretation is the most complex part because it is expected to answer the research question and in cases of discovery platform, the research questions are very general and are aimed at generating the hypothesis. Overall, NGS data analysis creates major challenges and unique opportunities for creativity in interpretation. Millions of aligned reads include novel biological events such as rare variants, mutations, rearrangements, insertions and deletions, in addition to the SNPs that have already been described in other methods. From millions of reads generated by NGS, about half of them do not align to the reference genome. The reason may be due to technical errors, but in many cases unaligned reads may represent the real biological events. For example, the repeated sequences are usually filtered by the alignment pipelines because they point to multiple locations across the genome. Another example would be the xenobiotic reads originated from 
infectious agents or symbiotic organisms. Moreover, because only a relatively small portion of the genome is fully annotated and because the regulatory events such as splicing and RNA editing are constantly taking place in living organisms, reads representing these events most likely will not align against the reference genome. Here is an example of tertiary visual analysis of RNA-seq data using the Integrative Genome Viewer developed by the Broad Institute of Cambridge, Massachusetts. Visually, we may distinguish such structures as exome presence or deletion, boundaries, haplotypes, and sites of RNA editing. Such analysis also allows for comparison of data among samples with different treatment conditions or among patients with known pathologies. This slide represents a snapshot of the ornithine decarboxylase 1 gene that is involved in direct proteasomal degradation of some proteins. A lack of reads in one of the exons of patient 2 indicates the deletion of exon, however the functional importance of such deletion remains to be examined. A high resolution of a different sample shown on this slide demonstrates some additional features such as rare variants and SNPs, allele usage, repeats, in this case the reference gene is TGF-beta, which codes for a circulating cytokine involved in cells proliferation, differentiation and regeneration. The SNP indicated by the arrow is a silent variant because changes in a nucleotide from C to T does not affect the code for the resulting amino acid. The existing NGS platforms could also be divided into amplification-dependent and amplification-independent technologies, each of them having certain advantages and disadvantages. The typical representatives of the amplification-dependent technology are Roche, Illumina, Life Technologies and Complete Genomics. As the name implies, the common feature of these technologies is that samples have to be amplified prior to be sequenced. The amplification-independent technologies have been developed by such companies as Helicos Biosciences, Pacific Biosciences, Iron Torrent Systems and Oxford Nanopore. Each of these technologies may have proprietary trade names for these processes and they differ in chemistry, mode of recording and detection of the incorporation events. Amplification-dependent technologies have been developed by some of the major manufacturers of scientific equipment and as such the main advantages of these technologies are related to the infrastructure capabilities of these companies to support their products and to develop accessories that would facilitate the process. Among these advantages are automated sample preparation, scientific and customer support, existence of data analysis software packages tailored for such technologies. The disadvantages can be summarized as lower amplification of GC-rich regions of genome, procedural errors related to the amplification process, a relatively small number of samples per run, and usually costly instruments and reagents. Illumina is the most popular NGS platform and it is used by more than 80% of investigators involved in deep sequencing. The technology's name is TrueSeq and it uses proprietary terminator-based methods for detection of the incorporating fluorescently labeled nucleotides. The sequencing process by itself takes somewhere between 2 to 8 days depending on the targeted application and is preceded by a day or two of library preparation and cluster generation. Clustering is a process wherein each fragment molecule is isothermally amplified. The flow cell is a glass slide with lanes. Each lane is a channel coated with a lawn composed of two types of oligos. Hybridization is enabled by the first of the two types of oligos on the surface. This oligo is complementary to the adapter region on one of the fragment strands. A polymerase creates a complement of the hybridized fragment. The double-stranded molecule is denatured and the original template is washed away. The strands are clonally amplified through bridge amplification. In this process, the strand folds over and the adapter region hybridizes to the second type of oligo on the flow cell. Polymerases generate the complementary strand, forming a double-stranded bridge. This bridge is denatured 
resulting in two single-stranded copies of the molecule that are tethered to the flow cell. The process is then repeated over and over and occurs simultaneously for millions of clusters, resulting in clonal amplification of all the fragments. After bridge amplification, the reverse strands are cleaved and washed off, leaving only the forward strands. The three prime ends are blocked to prevent unwanted priming. Sequencing begins with the extension of the first sequencing primer to produce the first read. With each cycle, fluorescently tagged nucleotides compete for addition to the growing chain. Only one is incorporated based on the sequence of the template. After the addition of each nucleotide, the clusters are excited by a light source and a characteristic fluorescent signal is emitted. This proprietary process is called sequencing by synthesis. The number of cycles determines the length of the read. The emission wavelength, along with the signal intensity, determine the base call. For a given cluster, all identical strands are read simultaneously. Hundreds of millions of clusters are sequenced in a massively parallel process. This image represents a small fraction of the flow cell. After the completion of the first read, the read product is washed away. In this step, the index 1 read primer is introduced and hybridized to the template. The read is generated similar to the first read. After completion of the index read, the read product is washed off and the three prime end of the template is deprotected. The template now folds over and binds the second oligo on the flow cell. Index 2 is read in the same manner as index 1. Index 2 read product is washed off at the completion of this step. Polymerases extend the second flow cell oligo, forming a double-stranded bridge. This double-stranded DNA is then linearized and the three prime ends blocked. The original forward strand is cleaved off and washed away, leaving the reverse strand. Read 2 begins with the introduction of the Read 2 sequencing primer. As with Read 1, the sequencing steps are repeated until the desired read length is achieved. The Read 2 product is washed away. This entire process generates millions of reads, representing all the fragments. Sequences from pooled sample libraries are separated based on the unique indices introduced during the sample preparation. For each sample, reads with similar stretches of base calls are locally clustered. Forward and reverse reads are paired, creating contiguous sequences. These contiguous sequences are aligned back to the reference genome for variant identification. The paired end information is used to resolve ambiguous alignments. Amplification independent platforms have some advantages such as real-time sequencing without amplification of samples, ability to analyze minute quantities of samples, and a single molecule resolution. However, the sample preparation is done mostly manually and it is a very tedious process. The biggest disadvantages are the potential sequencing errors due to short reads and insufficient coverage. The manufacturers of amplification independent platforms used to be small startup companies and oftentimes they were not able to maintain an adequate technical support for their products. In the recent years, however, the big players in the molecular biology equipment manufacturers have acquired such small startup companies and currently the support for these technologies is not anymore a major concern. Pacific Biosciences used to be one of the most promising technologies when it was first introduced about six years ago. However, it took several years and a lot of investments to improve the technology, which ultimately limited its popularity and availability among research labs. Pacific Biosciences is developing a transformative DNA sequencing technology that will revolutionize the field of genetic analysis by enabling researchers to answer questions important to human health care. We call it SMART, Single Molecule Real-Time DNA Sequencing, 
A breakthrough technology based on the natural process that occurs every time living cells divide. Prior to division, DNA is replicated by enzymes called DNA polymerases, which efficiently duplicate entire genomes in minutes by reading the DNA and sequentially building a complementary strand with matching building blocks called nucleotides. Pacific Biosciences Smart Sequencing harnesses the power of the polymerase as a sequencing engine by eavesdropping on it while it works to replicate DNA. This approach is enabled by two proprietary technologies. The first is phospholinked nucleotides. To visualize polymerase activity, a different colored fluorescent label is attached to each of the four nucleotides, A, C, G, and T. In contrast to other sequencing approaches, our phospholinked nucleotides carry their fluorescent label on the terminal phosphate rather than the base. Through this innovation, the enzyme cleaves away the fluorescent label as part of the incorporation process, leaving behind a completely natural strand of DNA. This enables us to exploit the inherent properties of the DNA polymerase, including high speed, long read length, and high fidelity. The second key technology is a nanophotonic visualization chamber called the Zero Mode Waveguide, or ZMW. It enables observation of individual molecules against the required background of labeled nucleotides, while maintaining high signal to noise. The ZMW is a cylindrical metallic chamber approximately 70 nanometers wide that is illuminated through its glass support, creating an extremely small detection volume, just 20 zeptoliters. Nucleotides diffuse in and out of the ZMW in microseconds. When the polymerase encounters the correct nucleotide, it takes several milliseconds to incorporate it during which time its fluorescent label is excited, emitting light that's captured by a sensitive detector. After incorporation, the label is clipped off and diffuses away. The whole process repeats, creating sequential bursts of light corresponding to the different nucleotides. These are recorded, thus building the DNA sequence. Our smart sequencing harnesses the polymerase's natural ability to synthesize 10 or more bases per second over thousands of continuous incorporations, leading to high speed and long read sequencing. Additionally, our smart technology design allows simultaneous multiplexing of thousands of ZMWs in parallel, all concurrently replicating DNA in real time. The data is assembled into whole genomes and analyzed by researchers. Our smart sequencing technology will ultimately translate nature's ability to replicate an entire genome in under an hour to an instrument that will sequence a human genome in minutes for under a hundred dollars. This unprecedented level of performance will completely redefine the field of genetic analysis and will enable new scientific advancements that will lead to improved healthcare worldwide. Pacific Biosciences Smart DNA Sequencing. Iron PGM will be most likely the unit used widely in small medical practices. PGM stands for Personal Genome Machine and it is also called the smallest pH meter because the principle of detection of incorporated nucleotides is based on the changes in pH during this process. The runtime is about two hours and the price per machine is around $50,000. Ion Torrent technology takes an entirely new approach to sequencing, making it faster, simpler, and more affordable than ever before. Unlike other sequencing technologies, Ion Torrent systems sequence DNA using a semiconductor chip, similar to the chip found in your digital camera. While the chip in your camera has a sensing layer covered with millions of pixels that translate light into digital information, an ion chip has millions of wells covering those pixels. These wells capture chemical information from DNA sequencing and translate it into digital information, or base calls. The sequencing process starts when a sample of DNA is cut up into millions of fragments. Each fragment then attaches to its own bead and is copied until it covers the bead. This automated process covers millions of beads with millions of different fragments. 
These beads then flow across the chip, each depositing into a well. Then the chip is flooded with one of the four DNA nucleotides. Whenever a nucleotide is incorporated into a single strand of DNA, a hydrogen ion is released. This is how the ion torrent system sequences DNA, by reading this chemical change directly on the chip. The hydrogen ion changes the pH of the solution in the well. An ion-sensitive layer beneath the well measures that change in pH and converts it to voltage. This voltage change is recorded, indicating that the nucleotide was incorporated and the base was called. In essence, each well works as the world's smallest pH meter. The process is repeated every 15 seconds with a different nucleotide washing over the chip. For example, cytosine. A polymerase incorporates the C nucleotide in the DNA strand if a complementary G molecule is present. If the nucleotide is not complementary to the next base, no ion is released, no voltage change is recorded, and no base is called. If there are two identical bases next to each other, two nucleotides are incorporated, the voltage doubles, and the chip records two bases called. This process happens simultaneously in millions of wells. So regardless of whether you're using a chip with one million wells or one billion, the sequencing process takes only a few hours, a fraction of the time that it would take for traditional light-based sequencers. This process is also massively scalable. In just two years, chip output has increased a thousandfold, with potential to increase even more in the future. By combining a simple chemical process with proven semiconductor technology, ion torrent systems simplify sequencing, making it faster, more scalable, and more accessible. Helicos is probably the oldest uh, amplification independent technology and our lab has used it on many occasions for the past several years and overall the technology meets our expectations. The run allows to sequence 50 samples at a time and lasts about eight days generating hundreds of gigabases of data. Sample preparation includes depletion of the ribosomal RNA, shearing into small fragments of 100-200 nucleotides in lens, synthesis of first-run cDNA and poly-A tailing. The molecule to be sequenced is hybridized to the flow cell on billions of oligo T universal capture sites immobilized on the flow cell surface. The sequencing begins by injection of DNA polymerase and fluorescent nucleotides. The oligo capture sites serve as sequencing primers for the synthesis. DNA polymerase catalyzes the addition of nucleotides to the complementary strand and after the incorporation the excessive nucleotides and DNA polymerase is washed away. The incorporated nucleotides are visualized by illuminating the stage and recording the lights on the respective field of view. After the image is recorded the fluorescent label is cleaved and the cycle begins again. This slide represents the sequencing process using Helicos platform and explains the way the nucleotides are identified in the sequencing process. One specific nucleotide is added at a time. Incorporation of every nucleotide is recorded. The remaining nucleotides are washed out and the next nucleotide is added to the sample. During the synthesis process, the CCD camera takes many images in a stepwise manner covering the whole field of view. Since the exact location of the template is known and because the order of nucleotides addition is predetermined, the light generated by the incorporation of nucleotides is recorded as a base pair letter. The process is repeated over and over and the final sequence is either assembled into one string or is compared to a reference genome to calculate the level of expression of transcripts. One of the most promising sequencing technologies today is the Oxford Nanopore, also called strand sequencing. The two advertised systems are Minion and Gridiron. General principles consist of passage of intact DNA through a tubular nanopore structure and sequencing of DNA as it translocates through the pore.
Oxford Nanopore is developing a method of DNA analysis called strand sequencing. At the heart of strand sequencing is a protein nanopore. This model shows a typical nanopore made from protein. You can see that at the core of the protein is a hollow tube that is only a few nanometers in diameter. Oxford Nanopore designs and manufactures bespoke nanopore structures for a range of applications. In nature, nanopores form holes in membranes. In Oxford Nanopore's system, the nanopore is inserted into a membrane created by a synthetic polymer. This membrane has very high electronic resistance. Here you can see a nanopore piercing a single hole in a membrane made from synthetic polymer. A potential is applied across the membrane, resulting in a current flowing only through the aperture of the nanopore. Single molecules that enter the nanopore cause characteristic disruptions in the current. By measuring that disruption, the molecule can be identified. In strand sequencing, an intact DNA polymer is sequenced as it passes through the nanopore. Here you see a DNA enzyme complex approaching the nanopore shown in blue. The enzyme shown in green is designed to ratchet the DNA strand through the nanopore one base at a time. The enzyme binds to the end of a double strand of DNA and unzips the double strand to form a long single strand which it feeds through the nanopore. As the DNA strand moves through the nanopore one base at a time, a characteristic disruption in current is created by the presence of particular combinations of bases in a particular part of the nanopore. Because these disruptions in current are so specific to the different combinations, this information can be used to determine the order of bases on that DNA strand. There is no deterioration of accuracy as the long DNA strand is sequenced. By preparing the DNA so it has a hairpin structure at its end, the system can read both strands, that is the sense and antisense strands of the DNA. This gives advantages in data analysis. In order to create a high throughput system, a number of nanopore experiments can be conducted at the same time by using an array chip. Multiple microwells are fabricated onto an array chip using standard semiconductor materials. These array chips may be scaled according to need. The user may require tens of channels to hundreds of thousands of channels depending on the application. This array chip is built into a consumable cartridge which also contains the fluidics required to run the chip. The analyte is added to the cartridge which is then used in conjunction with an instrument, the gridiron node, for real-time data collection and analysis. The array chip is also designed to be used inside the miniaturised miniron instrument. Alignment tools are very diverse and the majority of them are open source, developers maintained and supported applications. Bowtie has been developed by the Center for Bioinformatics and Computational Biology at the University of Maryland. It is used for alignment of short and long reads and it is part of the major pipelines developed for specific platforms. TopHat is the main application for splice junction mapping. Cufflink is an assembler of transcripts and Mac is one of the tools for mapping and quality control of samples. Many technologies are using either several of these tools or all of them in their standard pipelines of sequencing data analysis. The sequencing data could be visualized using available genome browsers. You have already seen some snapshots of the IGV browser. The rest of them have some different features that are not present in other browsers. And researchers usually have their preferred browsers for specific tasks. Implementation of next generation sequencing into clinical practice will allow for better diagnostics, stratification of patients based on their genotypes and possible pharmacogenomics interactions, and ultimately will lead to the development of personalized medicine with more effective drugs and fewer adverse events. This concludes the Lecture 7 presentation. If you have any questions, please post them in the discussion board or send me an email.